What's up guys, Vince Anomaly here with Shane Faison. And today we are going to be covering the MMA Grappling Trinity. So all the Fight Tips coaches, you know, we've been getting together, we've been developing sort of a formula to break down fighting into different aspects. And today's specific one is the MMA Grappling Trinity. And the way I like to think of it is there's three major components of it. You've got your submissions and positions. So with Jiu Jitsu guys, you know, you hear all the time, position before submission, submission, position, whatever it is, that's, those are common words. But now, obviously, with these gloves, we can punch, we can strike as well. So let's think of it as this triangle of positioning, submissions, and striking. And from there, we can flow in between each one of those. And that flow goes both directions. So sometimes you're going to be going from positions to submissions, sometimes positions to striking, striking to submissions, and you guys can see how that whole thing works. So today, let's take a look at simply going from positions to striking. So while we're using this MMA grappling trinity, we're always trying to be more dominant, right? So we're gonna be going from positions to striking. So let's say we start here for our first one in side control. I'm in this top position. If I'm here on Shane and I start to posture up to rain down some strikes, you know, I'm giving away a lot of space. Shane's gonna start shrimping, he's gonna start getting away exactly and he gets his guard back. You know, we definitely don't want that to happen. We've done all this work to get to a more dominant position here uh, in side control. Now what I want to do is if I do want to move from position to striking, if I do want to start punching Shane in the face, which, you know me, I'm a violent fighter. <laughs> I love to punch people in the face. I'm going to get to a better position first and use that position to find my strikes. So we've got side control on Shane. I'm going to posture up here. I like to, what I like to do is drive my elbow into Shane's face, flatten him out. I can also get this elbow right here on his hips, and I'm gonna pop up to this neon belly position. Now from here, I have all this weight, all this space to throw my weight into these punches and really rain down some heavy blows on Shane. This is a good point of control too, because if he tries to turn into me, my knee's there and I'm blocking and I'm staying past his guard, I'm staying away from his legs, and I can continue to finish off with these strikes. So there's number one guys moving from position, getting to neon belly to find our strikes. So position is striking number two. I've got Shane's back and I really want to start laying down some punishment here. But if I don't flatten Shane out, if, if I just have my hooks in and that's it and I start hitting, Shane's going to tripod up and I'm going to lose my balance, okay? Ultimately, I'm going to fall off the top. Even if I'm able to grab onto something, start switching to an arm bar or a leg, I might lose that too and end up in a position here on the ground where I didn't want to be. I just wanted to strike with Shane, right? So let's have Shane turtled up again. I've got these hooks in. I'm gonna make sure that my position is good first before I can strike, okay? So what I like to do here is I'm gonna get underneath these arms, I'm gonna bring my legs in, and what I'm gonna do is spread my knees wide, okay? Now what that does here, it forces Shane's back and hips to the ground. I've got my hips on top of his, nice and low, and I'm pushing up and I'm basically rising, looking my head to the ceiling. Okay, now when I'm here, I can strike, I can post on Shane and hit his head. Can you get out of this, Shane? This sucks. <laughs> it sucks. It really does, guys. But the whole reason why that works, why these strikes open up, is because I'm able to flatten them out. Now, that's one thing that uh, my Jiu Jitsu coach, Kevin Casey, showed me. You know, I'm not supposed to share a bunch of our secrets. <laughs> and this one's more of a basic one, guys. So you get on the back, you flatten your opponent out, and then you can start to rain in some strikes. Is that, uh, is that what you call the grapevine? Grapevining? Uh, no. Well, this grapevining would be when I'm threading my legs through. I actually like to just keep my feet in the middle and spread my legs wide. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, and what that does is, again, it forces your hips down and it flattens you out on the bottom. Got it. Now let's say I've got this mount position on Shane and I'm starting to punch, but I feel like I really can't stay on top and keep that control. Maybe he's a lot bigger than me or maybe he's just a lot better on the ground and he's, he's practicing good defense. So maybe he's framing up on my hips, he's getting his elbows in, he's bucking me off. I don't want to lose this position, right? but I still want to strike. So what do we do? We advance to a better position and use that position to strike. So when I'm here and I'm starting to punch Shane, I feel him starting to push off on my hips. I'm going to reach around. I'm going to control one wrist and feed it through to my other. Okay. So this arm that's wrapped around his head, I'm going to feed his wrist control there and I'm going to pull it nice and tight. Okay. This is called a gift wrap. Now from this position here, I'm going to lift him up, bring my knee right behind his back. I'm up on my toes. And at the same time, I'm bringing my other foot up by his hip. So notice how Shane is, is on his side right here. And now he's pretty trapped. So I can strike and not have to worry about him shrimping away, pushing off my hips, getting, 
getting half guard or just getting out of the mount position. You know, I, I really want to be dominant. And obviously, guys, this right here is a dominant position to strike from. <laughs> this position also sucks. <laughs> <laughs> now let's start off in side control again. You know, I really want to start um, dominating from here. I've worked uh, this hard to get past Shane's guard. So let's go ahead and start striking. But again, if I just posture up and strike, Shane's gonna frame away and get his guard back. We don't want that to happen. So what I like to do here is work to a better position to strike from, which we've covered before in a video, but it's a good one to review. It's the crucifix. Ah. All right, so I've got Shane under control. I've got a nice cross face going. What I'm gonna do is slide my bottom leg through. At the same time, I'm feeding this top leg over. Okay, you can also go the other direction where you feed your top leg over, where I'm putting pressure on the shoulder, sliding my leg through underneath. Once I get there, I like to go this direction, guys, where I'm just stepping over, keeping his shoulder off the ground. I've also got this arm hooked around, so Shane can't use that to frame on my face. So I've completely taken away both of his arms. My weight's on top of Shane. I'm not resting my hips on the ground. And now, from this position, we can strike without having to worry about Shane getting that guard back. Okay, so we started to move from a position where we're in control, but we want to get to a more dominant position. And now, once the position is good, we can start striking. You're going to find yourself in this closed guard position a lot in MMA. You know, it's just, it's something that happens, especially if you have a really good jiu-jitsu or grappling guy on the bottom, they're going to be able to close their guard up on you and it's going to be very hard to open it up and get around. You know, especially if I'm trying to strike from here too, you know, Shane's going to be able to, to move, cut angles. I can't hit him well. He's going to be able to use his legs, open up and, and use his legs as shields too so that I can't pressure. That sucks for me on top if I really want to strike with this guy. So what I want to do instead is use a better position. And if the wall's right here, remember it's MMA, we want to utilize our whole surrounding. If I have this cage right here, what I'm going to do is start dragging Shane over. Okay, I'm going to use my hips and my feet to push and walk him up, get his head posted up right here on the wall. Notice too, my head positioning here right on Shane's chin. He can't move around much. Now I'm in a much better position to start striking. The reason why, this wall is right here. He can't really move. He can't use his guard to, to back up, move, get his leg uh, legs up to shield me. Yeah. He also can't stand up very easily and he's very squished. You know, a good grappling guy on the bottom, they're gonna want that space to move their hips around. Right here, you're pretty stuck. And now I can really start opening up with some strikes Ugh. from a much safer and better position. Ugh. Not to mention, until you hit me in the head, my <laughs> head's got nowhere to go. Yeah. Banging off the cage. Yeah, it's a, it's a brutal spot to be in for the guy on the bottom. But, uh, you know, again, it's the big reason why all this stuff works is I'm moving to a better position and using that positioning to then open up my strikes. So think of that MMA grappling trinity, positions to strikes. All right, guys, there you have it. So if you're just getting started in MMA or if you're transitioning from another art, this is a great reference that you can follow along to. A lot of us have heard the phrase position before submission in jiu-jitsu, but now in MMA that there's strikes involved, Vince here just provided five different ways that you can use your position to then land your dominant strikes. So re-watch, study, and practice. Until next time, I'm Shane. Here's the anomaly. Fight tips for the underdogs.